Uh, we like to have power series for any function whatsoever. We're getting there. We're just taking baby steps right now. Starting with geometric and doing little things to it to get other ones. We're going to find this is ridiculous. This, this process shouldn't go on forever. Right, e to the x has nothing to do with this. <coughs> what if I want a power series for e to the x? What do I do? So we go to next section, 10a, and we see what to do with generically for any f of x whatsoever. <coughs> How to get the power series for that is called a Taylor series. Okay? So I just want you to get familiar with getting a power series for a function. And that's what we're doing in this section, section 10.7. <coughs> But later we want to be able to get the power series for any function, and so that's going to have to come later when we do Taylor series. All right. So whatever is after the minus is the thing that gets raised to the x power. We saw that we could do algebra. Let's do it for this guy. Let's do algebra first, and then we'll do some calculus. How do we get the power series for 1 over 1 plus x squared? We saw this earlier. We need the 1, we have it in the numerator. We need the 1 in the denominator, we have it. We need a minus sign, we don't have it. Minus a negative x squared. Good job. Now we have it. Whatever is after the minus, nicely in blue here, is what gets raised to the nth power. Great. So the negative x squared goes, negative x squared gets squared, the negative x squared gets cubed, and so on. In general, it's going to look like negative x squared to the nth power. Start at 0. Conversion as long as the same interval is true. Negative x to x. Um, um, negative 1 to 1. x is between negative 1 and 1. Great. So we can square and, and cube and get the following series. And it alternates in sign, if you want to get the formation of it in summation form, you can make this negative 1 times x squared, and then make it negative 1 to the n, and x squared to the n, to see what's going on here. Converge it for the same x's, and here's what the first few terms look like. This can be on our list, but it's just an algebraic manipulation. It's not, important, it's not different enough. It's not important enough to really go on our list. But why do we do it? What do we know about this function? There's something special about this function. 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, um, the, the power series for it is alternating. But, but uh, before this class, 1 over 1 plus x squared, what, what's so special about that? Arc something? Arc 10. Arc 10 derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. If we integrate this, we get arc tan. Right? Okay. So when you integrate this, you get arc tan. Great. So we're going to do that. We're going to get a series for arc tan. Integrate term by term, we'll get a series for arc tan. Don't forget the plus c, though. <coughs> All right, each individual term we integrate. All right, 1 is antiderivative of x. Negative x squared, antiderivative is negative x cubed over 3. x fifth over 5, positive, minus x seventh over 7, and so on. Keep on going. In general, <coughs> x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, with an alternating on it. What about the c? Do it again the same way. We had um, this true for all x's between minus 1 and 1. In particular, for true, when x is 0, we like 0 because it kills everything that's on the left. What is the arctan of 0? What angle do you plug in the tan and have it spit out as 0? 0. Sign of 0. Cosine of 0. Yeah. So... Turns out, not always, I don't want you to always think this. In this particular case, though, c is 0. So we have a series for arc then. Number 4 on our list.
So we summarize on the next slide. We put the four guys on the next slide. The original, it's derivative, it's integral, <coughs> and some algebra and any integral. These four guys we need to know. Cheat sheet material right here. What do we do with these? They're true for x's between minus 1 and 1. We could take an x and plug in an x to both sides and get a true statement. Um, we can get an approximation for pi. I, I can plug <coughs> pi in, or, or I, um, I can plug something in here and get an approximation for a number. Okay? And when, that's what they, when they first doing this, they, they, they were interested in approximating pi, knowing pi is a certain number of digits. And they use a power series to get it. Because the more terms you use, the better accuracy you have. What, um, I won't get pi up. Um, Here. So pi over four is the arctan of one, right? So if I plug a one in here, I'll have a representation for pi over four. Uh, we gotta be careful though about that. We can't really plug a one in, can we? We only can use x between minus one and one. So we'll look on the next slide. We'll see one reason why we care. We saw the other reason about being able to integrate things that we can't integrate. But now I can integrate r can x <coughs> by integrating its power series. I can integrate log of 1 minus x by integrating its power series. Okay, these guys, I can integrate them already. It's not doing anything good by, uh, by being able to see their power series right now. But the point is that it, it will give you convergence. The, the speed of convergence is different. And it's only convergent for these minus 1 to 1. Some of these are more convergent. Um, you know, to get the kind of accuracy you want, you only have to go out a few terms. But these are these are all kind of slow in nature, uh, really, compared to some of the other ones we're going to get. Like if I really want accuracy to within three digits, you know, to the thousands place, it turns out I'm going to have to go a lot of terms out. Okay. But anyway, this is the idea. This is this is what we're um, what we're working with now. Okay. So you work on this one for me. X cubed over. 1 minus x quantity squared. Knowing these four guys here, let's do some alterations on them. All right. Using what we know, now get to something that we don't know. Which one of the four are we going to use? The second one. Because this is just x cubed times the second one. We have a power series for the second one. Go back to your cheat sheet, and you'll find the power series for the second one. The first few terms of it. Or the whole summation form of it. Oh, this is out of order here, sorry. So, we go back there, it's on the cheat sheet, we pull it off, and there we go. And so we plug in that power series. What's new is that we have to multiply it by x cubed. So we distribute it, multiply it by x cubed. Or we could do it in summation form here. We could distribute it, you know, and get the x cubed and the 2x4 and a 3x5. And, and we can get the first few terms. But I also want you to be able to get the summation form. And so if you put this 3 inside of here, the exponent becomes what it was with another product of x cubed in there. And then the n is also part of it. So what's the new exponent on x? It becomes n plus 2. Okay. All right, great. This animation is a little out of order, but that's, that's how it works. Wonderful. So... It isn't important enough to add to our list. It's just an algebraic manipulation, but um, but we can do it. Okay. Questions on that? Uh, 
Well, we saw this earlier, actually. It said we had a 5 in it. Yeah. Either way, you have to, if you want the summation form, you have to incorporate it in. If you want the summation form, it can't stay out here like this. It needs to be brought in. We already, we already did this one. I thought I had to eliminate this slide. So, we, we, you know, this is nothing new here. Factor out to 3, factor out to 4, is x squared over 4, minus a minus, and we have the summation for it. So, so don't worry about that. Um, there's a question at hand there, though. We'll see that sometimes we care about this. Uh, maybe I don't want the whole thing. Maybe I just want part of it. I want the coefficient on x to the 6th. <coughs> So I mean, I do the algebra. I manipulate it. I, you know, I factor out the three. I factor out the four. So I have my one. I have my one. I change the plus to a minus minus. We saw this earlier. You don't have to write it again. And then the thing that's after the minus is what gets raised to the nth power. This blue minus x squared over four. That's what gets raised to the nth power. I don't need the summation form though. I'm not interested in the whole formation of it. The formula. I just care about what the coefficient on x to the 6th is. For some reason, they're asking this question. So where is x to the 6th going to come from? I don't even care about these, really. It's not going to come from there. It's going to come from here. And I can't forget this 3 fourths still out here, though. So I mean, I can, I can get these other guys, but it doesn't help me answer my question. That's what I need to help me answer my question. This x to the 6th term. I want the coefficient on it. So the question on the exam can end up like this. You'll see questions like this in the old final. And so take the 3 in, take the 4 in, and the answer to the question is negative 3 over 256. Why do we care? Well, the bigger the, um, the terms go out, the smaller the, the uh, coefficients are getting. And so if we're interested in accuracy, knowing the size, knowing this, this coefficient is going to help us to recognize whether we want to go out that far in terms of accuracy. So, so this negative 3 over 256 might be something we desire. Okay. Questions about that? We have arctan of x. <coughs> we can plug something in. It takes a while to figure out something good enough to plug in. You like to be able to plug in 1, like we were talking about. But the series doesn't convert to that equals 1. So, so it took a while to figure out something nice to plug in that we can actually figure out. And what I came up with was uh, 1 over root 3 over, or a root 3 over 3. Plug it into both sides. Replace x by root 3 over 3. That's a number that's less than 1, so it's in your interval. You'll get convergence. You'll get equals to. Every place you see an x, you can replace it with that, and we can simplify it. Now, what's the question on the, what's the um, simplification on the left-hand side? What is the arctan of root 3 over 3? What angle do you plug in the tangent and have it spit this out? Um, the fact that it's root 3 over 3 is kind of deceptive. Um, let's call it 1 over root 3. And to figure it out, it's one of our 30, 45, you know, multiples. If you put a 2 in underneath both of them, you'll be able to figure it out. You know, and it's sine over cosine. So where is sine a half and cosine root 3 over 2? Uh, that's a pi over 6. And so this can be used to represent pi by pi being by 6. I is equal to this infinite summation. And you can use it. It's too slow, really. There's, there's better approximations to pi than this. But this is one of the things that they were concerned about. 
back in history when they were trying to figure out um, infinite, you know, this calculus is about, you know, the study of infinite, the study of what goes on as, as our input is very, very large. And so, how can we represent pi? And so this is one way to do it by using power series. Not the, not the, the main thing we do it for, but it's, it's one way. Take that log series. Now we had a negative on it, but we can put the negative on the other side. All the terms would be negative then, because it's not a part of the um, n power. All the terms are positive, then you multiply by negative one, all the terms are now negative. And we can plug x into here. Um, the x we're going to plug in here is a half. Replace x by a half. Okay. Why do we care? We're going to do a representation of the natural log of 2. Because 1 minus a half is a half. But that can be broken down to be the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 2. But the natural log of 1 is just 0. So we have a representation of the natural log of 2 by multiplying the negative back across. So these constants that we, that we use, these universal constants, E, pi, you know, here's another one, natural log of 2. At some point, this is very useful, knowing that the natural log of 2 is this representation of this power series. Okay. In physics, log 2 comes up a lot. And so log 2 comes up in applications, and knowing this, this, this expansion forward is useful when it comes out to ask the question about accuracy. And so, so anyway, these are just two examples, not the best, but why we care, that, that, that why am I doing this kind of thing. Why are you putting me through this pain? Uh, I'm just trying to discover what, what, why, why is this, you know, something that historically was useful. This is profound. This ability to be able to write this was a breakthrough, and 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 now we understand why, or where it came from.